Welcome in, everybody, to Betting Pros. It's time to place your bets. It is me, Joey P. Joe P. is up here, and it's week 18, and you know what that means. It's time to look ahead at the final regular season week of the NFL. Can you believe it? We're here already, and there's some major playoff implications. Some teams are in. Some teams can get in. Some teams need a lot of help, and some teams, well, they can't be helped at all. But this team is here to help you. It's Sam Hopp, and it's Pat Fitzmorris, and it's me, and we're going to go through the slate, talk about the early value on some of the lines in week 18, where we see see these games going and uh, last week pat fitzmorris it was another wild and wacky week in the nfl arizona cardinals getting a w against the eagles uh but luckily your packers have found themselves in a winning get in scenario but you my friend seem to be of little faith from what you told me before the show Oh, man. Yeah, I just have a little bit of trepidation about that matchup against the Bears show just because the Bears have been playing so well. And we'll talk mm -hmm. about it a little later. But like the Packers are going to have to truly earn their way into the playoffs. The Bears are not going to lay down for them. So, um, you know, if they win, they will have truly deserved it. All right. So Pat is hedging, but uh, Sam is not. Sam is repping his Green Bay stuff right now. I don't think you can see it in the box. You might have to pull that up a little bit, but there you go. There it is. The Green Bay Packers sweater is on this morning. Uh, so Sam, uh, this is, I think, the unexpected or maybe the most unexpected potential playoff appearance for the Packers in what, 25 years for you? I mean, but yeah, it, it's been a long time. I mean, the, I don't know what expectations I really had. For the Packers going into the season. I mean, I think the biggest thing was figuring out what Jordan Love is. And I think we sort of have. Uh, at least they're going to keep him around for another season or two, it, it seems like. But I, I'm i excited about their potential to make the playoffs and am, am much more confident than my fellow cheesehead yeah. Pat over here. By, that's by good... the way, Joe, it's 35 years, I think, was the last. Oh, and actually, I take that back. <laughs> they didn't make it. It was 1989 with Don Mikowski. Oh, the uh, magic and they, man. 10 and 6, and they didn't make it in that year. Yeah, Did not get well, a wild card you guys have spot. had a good run. My Patriots had a good run, too, but all good things come to an end. At least they lost this past weekend, so thank goodness for that. <laughs> and thank goodness for all the coverage we have here. Don't forget, if you're having fun at Fantasy Pros and Betting Pros, subscribe to our channels, but subscribe over at Betting Pros right now because you can win a one-year free premium upgrade when you do. Just ring that bell for notifications. Drop a comment below on any video, and that's it. That's all you got to do, and it's not just NFL. We've also got the NBA action, Fast Break Bets. Matt Modi taking you through the NBA slate every single Wednesday, every single Friday, 11 a.m. Eastern live right here on the channel. So don't miss that because that NBA betting is getting hot. Woo wee. Good times. All right. Let's start with some good times. And all the games are on Sunday because it's the last week of the season. Let's start with Pittsburgh and Baltimore. Baltimore uh, asserted itself with dominance. So any um, any concerns I had about the Baltimore Ravens have been uh, put to bed. So uh, I apologize on half of uh, myself. Uh, that uh, I did not believe enough of the Ravens and I had Miami on the money line because I thought they were going to uh, challenge them. They did not. They did not. But here we are. Uh, so a lot of teams, again, in week 18, Sam, this is the tough thing. You get teams that are sitting players, teams that you know, can't do anything else. So when we're talking about this line right here, right now you have Baltimore at four-point underdogs because the anticipation is they're not going to be, you know, putting anybody out there. They're going to take some weeks off. Maybe they'll play half a game. We'll see. 36 and a half is the number plus 165. And Sam, like this is the perfect example of a week 18 game already that is really difficult to gauge because of the variables and implications of teams that are in and have things to play for, uh, teams that are in and have nothing to play for and teams that, you know, are still fighting for their life. So what do you think about this line? Is this a game you stay away from because of the implications of it? Yeah, so Ravens already had the, the one seed in the AFC locked up. I, I I am wondering if they are going to play some of the starters, given how 2019 went uh, a couple years ago when they had the one seed locked up going into the final week. They sat Lamar Jackson and some of their other starters and then got the, the doors blown off them in the divisional round against Tennessee. But I still think taking the double bye for them is the optimal move. Mason Rudolph is going to be starting again in this game for the Steelers. It sounds like Kenny Pickett will be the backup, but I actually took the under 37 in this game earlier this morning. Neither team is particularly fast paced. The Ravens offense will obviously take a massive step back without Lamar Jackson. And this Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh defense has still played some decent games. Their pass rush, pass rush 
is still a, a force to be reckoned with. And Pittsburgh has been on offense, a very run heavy team, uh, especially over the last month. So I, I think all of this leads me to, again, the the under in this game and a divisional matchup with one team really needing the win here. Mm-hmm. They need a win and some help. Pittsburgh needs a win and a Buffalo loss, a win and a Jacksonville uh, loss or tie, a win and a Houston Indy tie. Pittsburgh tie, Jacksonville loss, Houston Indy doesn't end in a tie, and then Jacksonville loss plus a Denver win plus a Houston Indianapolis uh, not ending in a tie. So there's a lot of complicated things here. So, Pat, let's make it simple. Your thoughts on this Pittsburgh-Baltimore game? Yeah, I think um, I can't remember if it was like 29 percent or 32 percent right in that range. Basically a one third chance for the Steelers to get into the playoffs per NFL.com. Um, so, yeah, no, no incentive for the Ravens. But Sam raises a really interesting point about their last go round. Maybe John Harbaugh wants to take a different approach after that and not totally lay down in week 18. Mm hmm. But they're probably going to rest the starters early, if nothing else. So um, I don't trust the Steelers to take care of business in uh, one of the most hostile road venues for any team in the league. And uh, I really don't want to bet on the team that's probably going to be resting players. But I do want to bet the under, as Sam mentioned, and uh, I got it at 37 and a half. It feels like the the total should be like 34 and a half, 35 for this one. So I think there is a lot of value on the under. Next one here is a pick em. Indianapolis hosting Houston. Both teams are 9-7. and seven. Indy minus 1 right now at home. 47.5 is the number. Pat, uh, you can get minus 105 for Houston on the money line. You can get minus 115 on the money line for Indianapolis. Just scenario-wise to kind of run through this real quick. Houston can clinch AFC South division title with a win, a Jacksonville loss or tie. They can clinch a playoff berth with a win, a Jacksonville or loss, and a Pittsburgh loss or tie. And then Indy needs to win, and then he got a Jacksonville loss or tie or a Indy win and a Jacksonville loss. So either one, uh, that is a good situation. So they can even tie and still make the playoffs. So wacky stuff here. But look, these teams have gotten this far. These two coaches have done a great job, Pat, all year to get these two teams to 9-7 and seven, considering the obstacles they've overcome. That being said, you have a lean here on one of the sides of this game. Oh, you know, I really don't show um, it. I find it interesting, though, that this opened with the Colts favored by two and a half and was quickly bet down. Um, mm-hmm. And it, isn't it interesting, gentlemen, how the Texans have become such a public team this year? And like we've seen that a lot. Like um, there was a while I was kind of consistently going against the Texans because I didn't think we were getting any sort of value on them. Like, I, I feel like they have become a public team. Everyone loves C.J. Stroud. Everyone loves D'Amico Ryans. Everyone loves the Texans. So, um, yeah, I mean, the Colts beat the Texans back in week two. I don't know if there are many takeaways. I mean, Anthony Richardson was still playing at the time, and uh, the, the Indy jumped out to a big lead, but they were actually outgained in that game, I believe. The Colts are just so hard to figure out. I mean, they've won six of their last eight games, uh, but they lost by 20 to the Jake Browning-led Bengals, and they lost to the Falcons by 19. So, like, you don't know when they're going to come out and lay an egg. Um, I I think the opening line of Colts minus two and a half was probably closer to what it should be than where the line is sitting right now, but uh, I'm just not sure I want to bet the Colts this week. I'm probably just staying away. I'm leading the Colts on this one, Sam, Uh, just myself. They're at home. You know, you're asking a a new head coach and a rookie QB to go on the road and win a big game. And I'm not saying CJ Stroud's not up for that task. I think he is. But at the same time, if you look back at that game earlier this year, you know, no, the the Houston Texans haven't allowed a hundred yard rusher all season. And the guy who came closest was actually Zach Moss with 88, which is a credit to the offensive line, I think, of the Indianapolis Colts. And now they have Jonathan Taylor on the football coming off a good game. I think Taylor's the key to this game, his health. And I think they put the ball in Jonathan Taylor's hands in this one. I think that's how they win. What do you think? I don't don't know that they'll be able to run the ball. I mean, like you said, Houston's rushing defense has been great there. They they rank second in success rate allowed over the last four seasons. uh, Excuse me, over the last four weeks. Uh, This season, their rush defense is first in success rate and second in rushing DVOA. So I think the way that Indy is going to need to attack Houston is through the air. But give me CJ Stroud and the point, <laughs> uh, or, or give me the give me the Texans on the money line. I mean, he's 
he continues to play extremely well. They the or the Texans could have had a better day this past week against Tennessee if not for their offense sort of sputtering out in the red zone a couple of times, which again makes me optimistic that they'll be able to move the ball, especially against this Colts defense that doesn't really have anything particularly special about them. So I love the Texans in this spot. I think CJ Stroud steps up to the moment and delivers. All right, two teams I want nothing to do with. New Orleans Saints and Atlanta Falcons. They're going to be uh, in New Orleans. Uh, the New Orleans Saints are three and a half point favorites in this one. 41 and a half is the number. And then plus 150 for the Atlanta Falcons, who have not played well on the road all year, Sam. This is another, you know, kind of we'll evaluate Arthur Smith situation. So I'm sure, theoretically, the effort level here for Atlanta is going to be high in terms of Playoff implications, obviously, you know, it's a little bit different for them. So uh, they're trying to stay alive and and see if they can somehow, you know, figure it all out. But in your opinion here, the way this line is set, I mean, it's a tough sell for me to have any sort of faith in either of these teams. New Orleans can clinch NFC South with a win and a Tampa loss or tie if they tie or Tampa loses, and then also they can win and clinch a playoff berth with a Seattle loss or tie, a Green Bay loss or tie, or no tie, Seattle loss and Green Bay loss. So again, complicated, but for Atlanta, they got to win and Tampa's got to lose, and then they're still alive in this thing. Your thoughts on this contest? I agree. It's tough to really want to rely on either side here, which mm. is why I'm on the under for this game as well. <laughs> I, I expect we get... Desmond Ritter in this game it sounds like they're going to try to get Taylor Heineke ready to play for Atlanta but seems like it's not a, a given both defenses are top six in early down success rate so they're putting teams behind the sticks early in the drive and I I just think the, these offenses especially if you're going to make Atlanta have to pass the ball are not going to be able to to move it very well against this Saints defense, which has has had some good good games in the past. Obviously, he had a, a great game this past week against Tampa Bay. So I like the under 41 and a half. All right, the under for you, Sam. What about you, Pat? What do you think about this one? Just sticking with the under two and avoiding the sides? I think that's probably a good practice. I'm not sure I like the under. And in fact, I'm actually like a little inclined to bet the over here. Um, the last time these two teams mm, okay. played, it was Why? 24 to 15. So only 39 points. But yeah, so last time they played 24 to 15. But we saw these teams go up and down the field. There were over 800 yards of offense in that game. Uh, only two offensive touchdowns, both of them by Bijan Robinson. It's mainly because the uh, Saints kept petering out near the goal line. They had to settle for five Blake Groupie field goals. Um, so boy. <sighs> I don't know. Like, I, I think this number is just low enough where I think there's a smidge of value uh, on the over. But I'm I'm not interested in either side, Joe. You said it. Two really unpredictable teams. And, uh, you know, I just I don't know. I'm, I'm not betting Arthur Smith and I don't want to lay three and a half with the Saints either. <laughs> All right. Now, Jacksonville can clinch a playoff berth with a tie or a Pittsburgh loss or tie. If Pittsburgh loses and Denver loses and Houston Indianapolis doesn't end in a tie, Jacksonville's in. Now Jacksonville can clinch the AFC South if they just win. Just handle your business against the Tennessee Titans. That's all you got to do here. So the Tennessee Titans are at home. Jacksonville's going on the road. Uh, Tennessee is five-point underdogs at home. It's a Mike Vrabel team. So my guess is they are going to show up despite the five wins and they're going to play hard and try and ruin someone's day. 40 is the number for this one, plus 180 on the money line for Tennessee, which is a little tempting to me, Pat. I don't know about you, because, you know, nothing I'm sure that Mike Vrabel would love more than to stick it to somebody on the way out. Do you think Tennessee has that ability to do that against Jacksonville, or does Jacksonville go on the road and get a W and get themselves in? I think Tennessee absolutely has the ability to play spoiler here, Joe. And uh, I didn't take them on the money line, but I've already bet them with the points. And um, look... <sighs> Yeah, first of all, the Jaguars had lost four straight games before shutting out the Panthers 26 nothing, And I'm I'm not ready to say that their ship has been entirely righted just by virtue of shutting out the Panthers. Um, the other point I want to make about this game, like, and, and this does apply to some of the other Week 18 games as well, don't be so quick to dismiss the teams that have been eliminated from the playoffs and seemingly have nothing to play for. They want to go into the offseason on an upbeat note feeling good about themselves. 
Uh, and a win gets a lot of the bad taste from a failed season out of your mouth. So uh, maybe the season didn't go the way the Titans wanted to, but rather than end the season with yet the uh, the taste of another loss, uh, they can spoil the Jaguars' playoff hopes here and uh, you know go out on a triumphant note. So Mike Vrabel seems like a player's coach. I think his players are going to be up for this one. And uh, yeah, I, I I think the Titans are a very good bet here. Sam, you know, I think that's true of some teams and some coaches, but I think other teams and other coaches, you know, don't have their teams prepared. And that's why they're teams that are out. And those guys are thinking about their plane reservations. They're not thinking about trying to get hurt in week 18. The Titans feel a little bit more like what Pat's talking about, like a team that's going to be prepared. That being said, do you think that you want the Tennessee side of this game with the points? Because five is a pretty decent number. I do like Tennessee with the points here. The Jaguars are just on a downward trajectory right now. They continue to struggle on defense. Their offense is losing pieces. They just lost Jamal Agnew, so they are down to uh, Parker Washington as their wide receiver too now. And the sun, uh, this past week was their first positive EPA day on offense since they faced the Bengals in week 13. And that obviously had to come against a Panthers defense that has not played well at all this season. So I really like Tennessee with the points here. All right. The next one here, the Detroit Lions are 11 and five hosting the Minnesota Vikings at seven, seven. Uh, the Lions are five and a half point favorites in the consensus betting pros line. 46 and a half is the number Minnesota on the upset plus two Oh five. Now look, Detroit doesn't have much to play for. Uh, they tried their best, uh, but the referees uh, did not having it. Uh, over the weekend and uh now they're probably they're not in a position where they really changed too much in terms of their stars so they've won the division they've locked that up do you think you see dan campbell push his guys further or give them a little bit of a breather here sam as this game goes on and looking forward to the ultimate success of the playoffs yeah i really can't tell because the at worst they're going to be the number three seed in the conference they only get to the number two seed if they win and dallas loses and dallas plays in the late afternoon slot mm -hmm. i i I, we, I don't think we know who's starting for minnesota i expect it will be nick mullins um but this detroit offense has gotten back on track after a brief stint underperforming they've had they had three straight games without a success rate over 40%, and they've been above 42% in each of the last three weeks. So if the Lions are going to play their starters the full game, which I think is what Dan Campbell will want to do, given that's the only way that they can move up to the number two seat, then I really like Detroit uh, with the points here because Minnesota's defense has, has shown some holes over the last couple of weeks. And again, I, I expect the Lions to continue to click on offense. Yeah, it seems like the season's taken its toll. Every bounce that went their way last year has gone the opposite way, and all the injuries have finally, I think, mounted against Minnesota. I'm where Sam is. I'm on the uh, signs of the Lions in this game. And, you know, Dan Campbell is that kind of coach who wants to play every second of every game and bite every kneecap. I mean, it feels about right, doesn't it, Pat? It does, Joe. And um, I, I feel like he's going to want to get momentum back after not winning that game in Dallas, even though they should have won that game in Dallas. And uh, even though that was disappointing to those of us who were greedy and took the Lions on the money line rather than taking the points in that game. Uh, yeah, what a disappointing result that was. So, um, yeah, I, I do feel like the Lions are going to play it out. And I mean, the Vikings are a hot mess right now. Like not only do they have this quarterback situation where we don't know whether it's going to be Nick Mullins, maybe the return of Josh Dobbs. I don't think it's going to be Jaron Hall again. Um, but no matter who they put in, it's like resulting in turnovers galore. And the Vikings defense was a hot mess against the Packers. There were guys running wide open, like no one within 20 yards of them. So I think the Lions are going to take care of business here. Um, you know, the the lack of motivation is maybe holding this number down a little bit. I like them if I can get them at minus five. This next game, I got to be honest, boys, I want nothing to do with. The Patriots are at home four and 12, minus two and a half against the New York Jets. The number for this game is 30 and a half, plus 120 for the Jets in the money line. My temptation, Pat, is to look for the Jets here because the, there's something profound about the circle of life where Bill Belichick dominates the Jets his entire career and all these things and wins all these Super Bowls and all this stuff. And then maybe the last game he coaches could be a loss to the New York Jets in New England. 
I like the symmetry of that. It's a good story, but I don't know if I can invest in it. At the end of the day, look, tough day at the office probably for Brees Hall because they're really good against the run. You take that away, then you're making the Jets quarterbacks beat you, and I don't know if they're capable of that. I hate this game, Pat. I'm running away. Your thoughts? I hate it too, Joe. Uh, I I initially thought I was going to be betting the under, figuring we'd get a number at like 33 or 34. Nope. Nope. No, nope. thirty and a uh, half. <laughs> yeah, they set this bar really low, so I don't even have any interest in betting that. I'm walking away like you. All right, so Pat and I have left for the evening. Uh, Sam, would you like to join us out of the bar? No, give me the Patriots and Bill <laughs> Belichick and potentially his final se- uh, game as the Patriots head <sighs> coach. That is my hard hitting analysis right there. <laughs> That makes me sad because the last thing I want to do is the Patriots fans win another game and ruin any more draft position already that we've ruined. So that makes me even more angry, but let's move on. Uh, Carolina is going to host the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Boy, Tampa needs the Carolina Panthers in the worst way here. They, They had it right there for themselves last week. Now they've put themselves in a scenario where they got to win this week and keep that train going, unfortunately. So they are five and a half point favorites on the road, which makes sense. That feels about right to me. 37 and a half is the number plus 200 for the Carolina money line. Now Carolina has nothing to play for here, Sam. Uh, they are misery. They are terrible. Uh, do you think they can play spoiler here to Tampa Bay? Or do you think Tampa just goes out there and from a personnel perspective, just handles them? And considering, you know, what we've seen sometimes from Mike Evans against Carolina, this could be a lots of props on the overs on Mike Evans. Yeah, this one, I I think there's a couple ways to attack this one. I think the, the Bucks I think, take care of business. But if Tampa Bay leans too heavily into the run, then I think Carolina has a chance to cover because Rashad White has been one of the worst rushers in the league this year. He's near the bottom in rushing yards over expectation. The Carolina rushing defense has actually been pretty solid in their past defense is what teams are having success doing so with baker banged up a little bit it sounds like he's going to play but and and he has been playing really well i do think that you know two drives into the game if tampa bay is leaning on the run i think there's a potential live betting opportunity with the carol with carolina and the points but i don't i don't see a way that i want to attack it early on uh, before yeah. the game starts. Uh, makes sense to me here. I mean, I don't have faith in Carolina to cover any number or really necessarily, but Tampa, I just think is the better personnel. This is, this is a, this is a win in your in situation. I think Tampa handles their business. What do you think here, Pat? Oh, uh, I, I think they probably handle their business, Joe, but like but the five and a half Baker, is good enough to give you pause. If this was three and a half, it, I think we'd feel much better about it. It is. And it's another one of those instances where maybe we see the Panthers rally just because like it's been a nightmarish season Maybe you don't feel as bad about yourself if you go into the off season with like an upset win and and really play the spoiler for a divisional rival that needs this win badly. But um, yeah, for that reason, the bet here that I would want to make if I were playing it, I mean, forced to make a bet, I'd probably want to bet Tampa, but I just, I don't see enough value to do it. Um, Joe, what sort of total are we getting on the number of drinks thrown by David Tepper for this game? <laughs> I'm gonna set it at uh, I'm gonna set it at one and a half because one and you gotta go. Half. You know, right. you gotta imagine he's double fisting after last week for sure. By yeah, the way, exactly. the same Panther team that got shut out by the Jaguars on Sunday, so uh, I don't have too much faith. I'll, I'll take Tampa no. in the points here. I might close my eyes, but hopefully, I get that uh, one big Mike Evans touchdown, and that'll start to make me feel better as this game goes on. Cleveland, Cincinnati, the Cleveland Browns are going to the playoffs, folks, with elite Joe Flacco. I love it. The Bengals are 8-8. They're five-point favorites, though, at home because Cleveland is going to take their feet off the gas because there's nothing they can really do to better their situation. 39.5 is the number, plus 180 here on the Cleveland money line, which is kind of interesting here because, like, I get it. Cincinnati, Pat, is another team maybe they're playing for pride, but is that enough here against the backups of Cleveland to cover five? Yeah, that's the thing, Joe. I mean, the Browns have no incentive whatsoever being locked into that five seed. Yeah. But maybe they play their starters for a quarter and a half just to uh, keep a little bit of momentum going into the first round. Um, and as you said, really, there's no moment, uh, no incentive for the Bengals either, having been eliminated from the playoffs. So I'm, I'm just going to walk away from this one. All right. So Pat's walking away another game where you don't know exactly who's going to be on the field for how long. Do you see this one the same, Sam? 
No, I don't think Cleveland plays any of their major starters. There's mm -hmm. really no incentive for them to. I understand the, the rest versus rust debate here, but I, I think some of the injuries that Cleveland has suffered on defense is enough for them to say, okay, we don't want any more of those to happen, especially with guys like Miles Garrett and uh, Joe Flacco. But I do think one bigger trend, and I know I've mentioned this a number of times on the show this year, is is in these games with very uncertain situations just to bet the the plus money odds on these things to hopefully strike gold with the variance. So I think... Again, Cincinnati or excuse me, Cleveland has a slight coaching advantage over Cincinnati as well. And I don't know. I, I, I think taking the Browns on the money line is the better way to play it than taking them with the points. So it, it's a weird situation because we have again one team with no way to improve their playoff seating and one team that's eliminated as well. So there's really no incentive for either of them to win, though uh, a confidence boost might help a little. So uh, that's the way I'd be leaning for this game. If Nick Chubb was healthy, would the Cleveland Browns be the most dangerous team in the AFC, Sam? I honestly don't know that Nick Chubb changes things that much. Really? And See, I, know that's, I, I, I know that's a little spicy to say, but it... They're, they're passing the ball so well, like the the Amari Cooper connection, the Elijah Moore connection has been working well. David Njoku is oh, having a great, you know, <laughs> it took last Joe Flacco month after of... all these years to unlock D David Njoku. I, who would have thought that was coming? I Not not me. Not me. That's for sure. <laughs> but I think, I, I don't know. I don't think it changes that much. Uh, I think that the health on defense is what worries me the most uh, for my Brown's AFC championship future. What do you think, Pat? Do you think if Nick Chubb was still kicking around here? I mean, it's great to be throwing the football, but imagine having Nick Chubb running it too with that passing attack and running that play action off him. I mean, geez, what what could have been? I guess that's kind of the question. Yeah, I mean, it'd make the, the Browns offense a little more dangerous, but, you know, mm -hmm. there's there's the whole how much do running backs matter debates, and uh, Jerome I Ford is actually... <laughs> yeah, Jerome Ford's good, though. Like, I like Jerome Ford. So, I mean, no question, Nick, a healthy Nick Chubb is the better running back, but it's not like they don't have a running game with uh, Ford and a little bit of Kareem Hunt sprinkled in. So, I, like, the Browns are going to be one of the... F I, I can't wait to watch their first-round playoff game. Like, this is one of the, the teams I'm most excited about watching in the first weekend of the playoffs. Seattle can clinch a playoff berth with a win or a and a Green Bay loss or tie or a Green Bay loss and a Tampa Bay loss or with a tie of their own and a Green Bay loss and a New Orleans tie. So I hope you're all keeping track at home of all these scenarios here. Basically, if you're Seattle, you got to win a football game here. That's what you got to do and hope for the best. Now, the problem is they are in that later window, so I don't know how much it's going to change effort level-wise, but they are 8-8 eight and eight going to Arizona. This is the first of the 4 o'clock games we're going to talk about here. Three-point favorites they are on the road against Arizona. 47.5 is the total, plus 135 for Arizona on the money line. Sam, we'll start with you on this one here. Uh, Seattle on the road with the three, or do you like Arizona for the upset? My one note is no idea. Um, I think I think I take the the Cardinals here. I mean they they played well against the Eagles, who I I know are struggling quite a bit, but Seattle's defense has has taken a big step back here. Kyler Murray is is playing okay. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, I, I I'm staying away from this game for right now. Understandably so, Pat. Are you also somebody that's letting this one go in Week 18 because well, it's complicated. I am letting this one go, Joe. It is complicated. Uh, it's a really interesting line. And, man, the Cardinals are plucky and, and kind of have been all year for the most part. Like, even when they didn't have Kyler Murray, yeah. they were scrappy with Josh Dobbs. Um, and, you know, taking down the Eagles. Uh, what a what a feather in Jonathan Gannon's cap. Uh, pardon the, the pun with the Eagles. But um, so now they get another bird team that they could knock off. Uh, Seahawks, yes, still have a chance to squeeze into the playoffs. They're highly motivated. But I, I can't bet the Seahawks here with the way their defense has completely fallen apart. I mean, they they are having some major issues. Uh, like, this was a pretty good defense earlier in the season. And right now, man, they are just uh, – they have gone to seed. So, no thank you. I'm just – I'm not going to bet this one. All right, Pat. Here we go. Green Bay Packers at home against Chicago. They are at home, though. So they are three-point favorites, understandably so. The number for this game is 44, plus 140 on the Chicago side. And that's where you, 
seem to be living these days. So let's expand a little bit more on your take on this game. Yeah, uh, literally living on the Chicago side here in, in enemy territory. Um, so the Bears have won four of their last five, Joe. And they slapped around the Falcons last week in a big way. Uh, their nice little month-long run also includes victories over the other two teams in the NFC North, the Lions and the Vikings. And as well as the Packers played against the Vikings on New Year's Eve. And, um, you know, the Vikings... Quarterback problems finally gave the Packers an offense that could make them look good because the Packers have really struggled on defense of late, you know, allowing almost 400 passing yards to Baker Mayfield, then over 300 passing yards to Bryce Young. Um, I am worried about what Justin Fields might be able to do to the Packers, and uh, the Chicago defense has been terrific lately. So I hate to say it, but I do see value in the Bears at at plus three. And, um, you know, for personal reasons, rather than take the field goal, I've got it on the money line. I've got the Bears at plus 148. That way I'm either happy about the Packers winning and making the playoffs or I win some money. Okay, I think that's a very healthy thing to do here, Pat. Sam, your confidence is now going to be tested. Both these teams coming off wins in Week 17, pretty decisive ones too. So where do you stand with the lines when it comes to Packers and Bears? Give me the Packers and and the points. I, I know Jordan Love had a, a, a bad game against the Giants a couple of weeks ago, but he's played phenomenally over the last half of the season. He has five games with a PFF grade in the 75th percentile in his last nine games. He's really clicking with these receivers. Obviously, Jordan Reed potentially being out would be a, a huge hit because he seems like their most dynamic player on offense right now. But the the depth while again the the level of receiver that the packers have is not necessarily at the top tier but i think the depth that they have and that all of these guys can step up has has been a true testament to how they've grown over the second half of the season so you know imagine thinking that the chicago bears are going to come into lambo in week 18 with a future hall of fame quarterback and are going to win the game like come on Give me the Packers. Go Packo. Uh, All right. No, go Packo. There's no hedging for Sam. So, uh, you know, Sam, if if the Packers lose this, I'm going to have to drive down to the city to buy you a beer with my winnings, apparently, so you can drown your sorrows. <laughs> well, that's that's a very nice thing of you to do there, Pat. I'll say this. My favorite thing is to take the Packers on the money line and combine, combine that with anytime touchdown for Jaden Reed, who's just a tough guy. He scores every single week. I know he's got another injury. I think he'll play through it because this is a very important game here. You win, you get in. So Reed has been money, seven touchdowns in seven games. I mean, put those two things together, you're probably getting the plus money. That's the way I attach this one right here and going to attack it. All right, next one here, the Philadelphia Eagles. Ooh, rough times for the Philadelphia Eagles lately, gentlemen. They're going to go to New York to take on the New York Giants. The Giants are five-point underdogs at home, as they theoretically should be. 41 is the number, plus 195 on the money line for the Giants. Now, Sam, I don't know about you, but Taylor putting up 20 fantasy points last week. Taylor throwing the football. Taylor rushing a little bit. Giants don't have a great wide receiver core, but I don't know if it matters right now. This Eagles defense just seems to be falling apart at the seams. I like the Giants and the points on this side. I'm not saying the Giants went outright, but I'm taking the points. What are you doing with this one? Yeah, I don't have a leaning on the side. I, to your point, like the Eagles secondary is still a mess and then they just got gashed on the ground by the Cardinals and they racked up over 200 rushing yards against them. Uh, again, the Eagles have been playing extremely well uh, in terms of rushing defense this year, but I think the way I want to attack this is some of the player props with the Giants wide receivers. I know we don't talk about player props much on this show but just looking at again the way to attack the eagles i think uh wide receivers are targeted at the highest rate against the eagles so that's the way i'm looking um you know the giants got a little bit lucky with the the punt return touchdown uh against the rams this past week so uh if it's tyrod taylor i'm certainly more bullish on mm -hmm. the giants than if it's tommy devito or, or someone else all right, your thoughts, Pat Fitzmorris, on uh, this contest here. I tell you, I'm on the giant side of this one. The Eagles are not making me feel real good. 
Yeah, maybe I'm walking into a snare trap, Joe, but I've already bet the Eagles here. Okay. And um, they, I mean, no question, they are staggering. They have lost four of their last five, and their only win during that stretch was against these Giants, but they only won by eight and didn't cover in that game. Uh, So I just feel like this Eagles team still has a great deal of talent, even though the recent results have not reflected that. There's no way they should have lost to a team like the Cardinals at this late date in the season with so much on the line. Hopefully that loss fires up this team, and I think Nick Sirianni is going to want to build some momentum going into the playoffs. So I'm going to lay the points and take the Eagles. Yeah, if you look back here, not that long ago, too. I mean, you've got uh, a scenario where, you know, they they played the Eagles a couple weeks ago, and the Eagles won 33-25. You know, I always hate when teams play each other twice in a short period of time, too. That That's never typically a good thing. Usually it's very close there. All right, next one here on the slates. We continue to roll through the Rams and 49ers. The 49ers have put themselves in a good spot here, but the Rams, my goodness, if they come on hot of late, the number for this game is 42 and a half. If you like the Rams on the money lines, plus 150, minus three and a half here for the San Francisco 49ers. Pat, your thoughts on this one? Uh, obviously, um, yesterday, last week, I should say they handled their business. But the Chris McCaffrey uh, injury is certainly something to keep a close eye on. Yeah, the 49ers are locked into the number one seed. The Rams are locked into a playoff spot, and the only motivation for them is trying to get the sixth seed rather than the seventh seed. I don't know that that is that much motivation. Um, I'm sitting this one out. Sam, do you think that this is a a measuring stick game for the Rams, even if the 49ers are sitting people where, you know, they start to say, hey, look, we are good enough to compete here. Let's go in there. I kind of, you know, harken back to, you know, back in the day where the New York Giants took on and lost that uh, that perfect season uh, against the New England Patriots, but they realized that they could hang with the big boys and it was a big confidence builder for them. Is that the kind of game we could be looking at here for the Rams? I don't necessarily think so. I mean, they took the Ravens toe-to-toe and, and lost in overtime mm-hmm. just a couple of weeks ago. They and did. the Ravens, some might consider, are, are the best team in the NFL. And I think, again, if especially if San Francisco's players, I would expect they, they do in this game because when they all of their key starters have been healthy this year, they have been uh, an absolute wagon. And, and so I don't think they want to risk players like Trent Williams, like Brock Purdy, uh, Debo, and, and all those other guys getting hurt because health is the number one thing for them. So I like the Rams on the money line here. Again, the, the one point win over the Giants is not all that inspiring. It was probably Matthew Stafford's worst game in, in quite some time. But I think, again, the six seed versus seven seed probably doesn't sound huge, but it it could be the difference in them having to play San Francisco in the divisional round if whoever ends up being the seven seed wins their game. Uh, so I, I think they they have all the more motivation than San Francisco does. And again, Matthew Stafford could be, again, if not for Lamar Jackson, could be in the MVP consideration as well. All right, Denver at eight and eight, Las Vegas at seven and nine. How Denver is eight and eight, I'll never know. I don't, I don't even understand how that's possible. In fact, I sometimes have to rub my eyes just to make sure that I'm uh, actually seeing that correctly. But uh, Vegas is at home. They're two and a half point favorites. Thirty eight is the number, plus one twenty on the Denver money line. Now, look, Vegas, you know, can't really do anything here. But at the same time, I think this is Antonio Pierce trying to continue to make statements that he deserves to have this job. So I think they're going to get full effort out of this team. That's why I like the Raiders side of this game. I don't have a lot of faith in the Denver Broncos. I know they eked out a win last week. I don't care. I think this is the perfect trap where people are going to say, oh, look, Denver eked out a win. They have something to play for potentially. Uh, no, I'm going to go with the Raiders here, uh, just putting an end to the Denver Broncos season. Your thoughts, Sam? Do you agree or disagree with that notion? I agree. I This is probably my strongest conviction play of the week is, is the Las Vegas Raiders minus two and a half. The Las Vegas defense continues to play really well under Antonio Pierce. They're now third in early down EPA per play this season. Their rush defense is first in EPA per play allowed over the last four weeks, despite Las Vegas using the second highest rate of light boxes on defense. I used to think that, you know, having a defensive guy at coach is not the right way to go about building a team, but in my opinion, Antonio Pierce has earned that job. Again, if you're going to have a defensive 
coach uh, as your head coach, at least have someone who can be a culture builder. And I think he's done that in Las Vegas. I think he's doing the job. I think trying to find someone outside of the organization is going to be a tough task, uh, especially, you know, with some of their best players on defense right now, especially Max Crosby. So I love the Raiders. I love what Antonio Pierce is doing. I think a a huge credit to him um, getting this team to where they are right now. Pat, we're both on the Raiders. Are you coming with us? Man, I, I think I might have to piggyback you guys uh, as as convinced as you are. I had a slight leaning toward the Raiders, but have not bet this one early. And you guys are, are selling me like I I do think the Raiders defense is vastly underrated. And uh, that's actually part of the reason why the play I like more in this game is the under. I think this is going under 38. I mean, we've got Jared Stidham against Aiden O'Connell in this game and that that underrated Raiders defense. So, um, you know, you can absolutely interest me in the under here. And by the way, Joe, the, the Broncos season, what an interesting bell curve season they've had. Just terrible out of the gate, then actually pretty good for a while yeah. at midseason and then terrible again to, to end things. So it's yeah. it's been a They're really eliminated. unusual it's, season. It's so funny. They're eliminated from the playoffs at eight and eight. And this is a matter of pride. Like you get that, you know, that winning season with that last W and then Sean Payton can say, Hey, I went in there. I won. I cleaned up uh, the mess here. We're going to move on from Russell Wilson. This was my year of evaluating and to like to end a season nine and eight, taking over a team that was such a huge mess last year, I think is an accomplishment. I just don't think he's going to get there. Uh, I think Vegas at the end of the day is going to, you know, they're both going to be eight and nine teams when the dust settles on week 18. That's just kind of where I see them. Uh, the Kansas City Chiefs, boy, oh boy, the Chiefs. Uh, they finally uh, got a victory there. Uh, <laughs> they're going to take on the Chargers uh, this week. Now, the Chargers are two point favorites at home because uh, there's really not too much here to play for for the Kansas City Chiefs. 36 is the number for this one, plus 110. So, Pat. <sighs> You know, I guess there's two arguments here. You know, is it smart for the Chiefs to kind of just sit back and and regroup and rest their weary heads a little bit? Or should they be going out there and trying to figure out what's going on and go beat up on a bad Chargers team and have some confidence going into the playoffs? Oh, you could make a case for that, Joe. But I, I actually think like against the Bengals, we saw that offense function probably better than it has at any other point mm. month, last month and a half. So maybe they just rest on their laurels. And uh, I, I think you've got to rest the franchise at this point and not take any risks. Because if, if you lose Patrick Mahomes, that's it. Your season is over. So I, I really doubt we see him um, there. But you know, just no real incentive for the Chiefs being locked into that third seed. But do I trust the Easton stick led Chargers to, to beat the Chiefs? I do not, especially with I mean, they could not generate anything in the passing game last week with uh, no Keenan Allen, no Josh Palmer. I don't see what the incentive is to bring Keenan Allen back. No, uh, he know, the, the veteran. Back. Yeah. So no um, way. I, I just I'm not interested in playing this game at all. That's fair enough. Sam, are you out on this one, too? No, I like the Chiefs money line here uh, again for Plus some of the reasons that uh pat mentioned just the the chargers offense is <laughs> has been abysmal i think the chiefs with even some of their backups on defense will be able to uh lock this one up again and, and andy reed is, is still a good play caller i think whoever uh backs up i don't even know who backs up patrick mahomes at this point but there's no reason to start patrick mahomes in this game as long as he's healthy he gives the chiefs a chance to win And winning a meaningless Week 18 game is not nearly as important as winning in the wild card round. I think we're getting Blaine Blaine Gabbert, aren't we? Wouldn't it be Uh, Blaine Gabbert? That seems to be the case. Uh, Dallas at Washington. uh, Dallas is 13-point favorites in this one. 44.5 is the number, plus 550. Sam, it's a big number on the road. Uh, We talked about the big number on the road last week in Washington, so it feels like we're right back where we started from in Week 17. Uh, Your thoughts on this one here? Uh, That was uh, 17 points where they were behind, and of course, the last minute, we thought we were going to get Jacoby Brissett all the way up until Sunday, and that was not the case. Give me the Cowboys and the points. I mean, the the Commanders kept it close against the 49ers this past week up until halftime, and then it was just the 49ers were like, okay, we need to put this out of reach and they did so with ease again i think with this game and potentially you know some of the other games too with these you know games of how much are gonna are they gonna start their starter or play their starters all that sort of stuff is 
to keep an eye, you know, do some scoreboard watching yourself and look if the Eagles are trailing. I mean, look, you know, possibly place uh, a bet on the commanders to cover because the, the Cowboys might sit their their starters for, you know, the last quarter or something like that. So uh, that said, give me the Cowboys with the points. All right, Pat, too many points for you or you like the Cowboys as well? Oh, man. I mean, the Cowboys need this one. They're the far superior team. The commanders have lost seven straight. Sam Howell has been kind of a train wreck over the last month after playing pretty well for much of the season. I'm leaning Cowboys, but I I haven't bet it yet. This is it's just in that zone where I do not like laying this many points in NFL games. It's just, uh, you know, and, and maybe the commanders do have that thing where they want to go out on a good note and play really hard one last time and try to mess with a division rival. So I may yet bet the Cowboys, but I haven't done it yet. And I'm, I'm not sure whether I'll be able to pull the trigger or not. All right. Last one here. This is a fun one. The night game, 820. You get Miami, 11-5, and five, hosting Buffalo 10-6, winning the AFC East. That's what's on the line here between these two teams. Now, you do have Buffalo getting another way to get in, too. They can clinch a playoff berth uh, if they tie, if Pittsburgh loses, if Jacksonville loses, or if Houston and Indianapolis ends in a tie. So, this is kind of like, you know, that last ditch here. Can you win the division? Can you lock it all up? Pat? Who do you like in this contest? Because we're looking at the lines here right now. It's three on the side of Buffalo. They are the favorites in this one, as they, I think, should be. I actually think this is right. Um, Miami get their doors blown off by Baltimore last week. That sets them reeling a little bit. They've had some injuries on defense, too, lately. That's hurt. 50 is the number for this one. It's a very high total, plus 140 for Miami at home in the money line. Pat, your thoughts? Yeah, I think at first blush, people are going to see this and and want to maybe take Miami as a home dog. Um, and, and it does sound as if Mike McDaniel expects Tua Tungavailoa to play through the shoulder injury he sustained against the Ravens. Uh, but Bradley Chubb tore his ACL in that game. Uh, Zaven Howard is going to be out with a foot injury. That's a lot of defensive firepower the Dolphins are going to be missing here. Even though that defense has been playing really well, uh, or at least it was until it ran up against the Ravens. So, Also, we have seen the Bills consistently get up for games against top-notch opponents this season. Like They have done it all year, and uh, they've thrown their best punch in most of those games. Whereas the Dolphins... Not so much. We have seen them consistently shrink from the challenge of playing the best teams in the league. So uh, I think this line is right. Like you, Joe, it it does feel like it's probably set where it should be. Uh, I'm not going to bet this game. I just would warn people against like seeing the Dolphins getting points at home and being quick to jump on that one. Uh, I'm not anxious to do that. All right, Sam, are you anxious to bet either side of this game? I don't know that I am, uh, you know, kind of with with Pat here that having to lay three points uh, in an away game is again. I know the Dolphins have struggled a little bit the last couple of weeks, but they still have some firepower on offense. And obviously Jalen Waddle being banged up as well. We'll see if he goes. It's it's just such a funny scenario because the Bills, I believe, have the second best odds in the AFC to win the Super Bowl. And if they lose this game, they could be out of the playoffs completely. Like there, there's well, that's the thing, right, there, Sam? Because there's like obviously it's the some things game. that need to go. So you're gonna know if you're Buffalo, kind of. All right, if Tampa loses or this. I'm mean, not Tampa. Excuse me. If if you had Jacksonville lose, if you had Pittsburgh lose, you had a couple of things happen already. You kind of know your your fate. So then it becomes the pride of the division. How much that matters. I mean, yeah, but the two seed versus the six seed is also a sure. massive jump too. Like you're you're getting one possibly two home games if if you win instead of having to go on the road to again i mean they might have to go on the, on the road to the the dolphins then uh again and again coming off of a loss or or going up on the road to the chiefs who i knew they they just beat recently but that game could have gone either way too so i think buffalo regardless of the outcome of those the Steeler and the jacksonville games they're going to be up for it and are going to want to win. There's not, I mean, they're not going to rest any starters by any means, but I think the key here is how much the bills pass the ball, because since Joe Brady took over, they have gone one game with a positive pass rate over expectation. And that was against the chiefs. 
And the way to attack this Bills def or excuse me, this Dolphins defense, especially with the injuries that you guys mentioned, is through the air. I mean, we saw what Lamar Jackson just did to the Dolphins this past week. So I I don't really know, understand why they're not passing the ball so much. I mean, they haven't really had to a ton, but they've dropped back on just over 50% of their plays the last four weeks, which is dead last in the league over that span. So if they let Josh Allen loose, then I feel more confident about the Bills taking this one. All right. Stay on top of all the lines with the Betting Pros app. Download it now if you haven't already. Sync up your sports book and start betting smarter, not harder. Don't forget, too, if you have iOS, you get three free days of premium to check that out. Perfect time. Again, this is that time of year where you got so many sports going on. It's an incredible group of, uh, of systems here that we have over at Betting Pros. The app is just tremendous, and it's a great way to stay on top of all these lines as they move to with the line alerts. So you can set the game notifications so you know because you know. We all know there's going to be a lot of line movement this week with all the news of who's in, who's out, who's going to play, who's not. So it's going to be one of the trickier weeks in the NFL, but that's what we're here for. And that's what we're here to support you. There'll be more coverage later in the week, of course, on Thursday and Friday for the NFL side. But in the meantime, that'll do it for us. But the story of the game goes on for Sam and Pat. I'm Joey P. We'll see you next time, kids. <laughs>